So Smith Family Videos 3234 writes, great video, very helpful. Do you have a video on how to do a scoreboard graphic and then be able to change the info, yardage, club, etc., like you were doing in Premiere Pro? It's the only video on YouTube I can't find a tutorial on. Not until now. That's what we're going to do in this tutorial. Let's get into it. Welcome back people, here we go. More tutorials for you, got an entirely new background. And now we're gonna kinda slow these tutorials down a little bit. Instead of just flying through showing you what I did, I'm actually gonna do it for you so we're, you can follow along for me. So in today's tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna overview you on how to design it in Illustrator, how to animate it in After Effects, and then how to bring it into Premiere to edit it. So uh, recently, ironically, I've been working with a couple uh, TikTok influencers and stuff like that that are big in the golf space and I've actually created some graphics for them to use uh, specifically right now Berdogi great guy go follow his content I'll throw it up here on the screen some of the stuff he does is super funny very relatable golf uh, I'm helping him rebrand his channel bring some more motion graphics to a lot of his stuff he actually edits in DaVinci Resolve so we're creating this like kind of relationship together where I'm figuring out new things that's outside of Adobe and I'm helping him create new graphics and stuff too so Let's jump into it. So I'll show you what I have right now. Here's my scorecard. Pretty simple, nothing too fancy. The point of this is just to kind of give the, the viewer some information on what you're doing, but not take too much away from the video footage, right? So we don't want to distract the viewer too much. Um, so mine's pretty simple. So what we can do is we can jump into Illustrator here. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of what I did for Berdogi. So I gave him four options, as you can tell here, simple, a little bit more stylized, heavily stylized, and then really stylized, right? Um, so I gave him options to kind of pick from. And so he went with these two options and now we've refined down one and we started animating it and I gave him all the assets and now we're troubleshooting how to create those assets in DaVinci Resolve so he can use them to edit. But that's a whole different video and that's a whole different topic for another time. But what we're gonna do is we're going to create the simple version right here at the top left. Uh, for this sake, I'm going to do everything as simple as possible, um, designing it and animating it. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to me if you want to and ask, hey, how do I animate this in a more complex way? And, uh, you know, I'll show you once we get into After Effects. So let's open up Illustrator. I'm going to open up a new document. Uh, we're going to only need one artboard for this and with... I'm going to do 4K for this example. So um, basically, yeah, I'm going to create a 3840 by 2160. And we're just going to call this scorecard. Uh, what is this called? A tutorial. <laughs> Duh. Tutorial scorecard. And then what we're going to do is it's going to create one nice little comp or artboard that we can work with. And so from here... Uh, it's all about like what you know in Illustrator, right? If you don't know too much, I would highly recommend jumping out there and watching some tutorials and see like what's out there, what's what's within your threshold of learning. But for this sake, I'm only going to be using simple shapes and simple strokes just to kind of emulate the scorecard. Because if you go to Google and search it, a lot of the stuff that you see on TV is fairly simple. It's just stylized with color so that it pops a little more, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start right here with the rectangle tool. And from what a, a lot of what I've seen, a lot of them are like, you know, very like rectangularly shaped. So they're wider and so they're not as square. So I'm going to undo this again just so I can kind of stay in proportions. What I usually do is I like to bring out some guides so we can move the guide and it'll tell you where the center of the artboard is. So then I can have a center point to work with. And so then I'll lock this guy down. Excuse me. Unlock. Call this guides just in case if I need to add other guides and I'm coming down here to the bottom right to create a new layer. And then I'm gonna call this layer artwork. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this toolbar over here on the left, click on the rectangle tool. You know, I need to click on it huh? first, click on it and then create a box. I'm Now I'm holding option on my keyboard so that it, I'm only pushing one side, but the other, the opposite side will will actually go in the same retaining size. So I'll, I want to do some stuff that's big because I can always resize in video, size down. It's better to size down than to size up. You're going to lose a lot of clarity. So I say that's a good size for something, maybe 
have it a little more width wise height wise a little higher and so i'm just going to do simple colors for this one just because i want to kind of just show the concept of how to create it versus like going in and actually like stylizing it and all that stuff and i'm having a hard time finding my swatches right now so we're just going to do black so for this sake we're just going to do black on white and that way you can even if you want to jump the opacity down so it's like opaque we could do it at 75 percent, so you can see some of the footage underneath it let's just do 50. How about that? Just so you can see completely everything underneath it. So now what we're going to do is now you can kind of envision what a scorecard would be like. Like, say, if we go to his, right, you're going to have some people might want to have their logo. Some people don't. Other people might want to have call outs for stuff that they want. For this case, I'm just going to do simple stuff, the name, the score, and then the information that needs to come in there. OK, so what we're going to do. As you could tell, that other one was a little wider in stance because we want the top half to be a little heavier in weight, size, and stuff just because it wants to be more visible. It's the name and score. And underneath it, that next set of text can be very much smaller uh, because it's like secondary to what, what people want to see, right? So what I'm doing now is I got the box down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here or Command-2 on the keyboard. You can lock that down so it doesn't like make any anchor points or anything like that. I'm going to come into the pen tool instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line that goes across. I'm holding shift on my keyboard so the line stays straight. And then I'm clicking there again. Now I just hit V on my keyboard to come out of the pen tool so I don't keep drawing more points. And then if you come here, obviously you could tell it's in fill mode. So we need to reverse that to put it into stroke mode. And then we come here and you can tell it has a very thin stroke here. If I come here to the top left on controls, and if you don't ever see these controls, if you come here to view, excuse me, window, you hit controls right there, all these beautiful controls will pop up. You also have them on the right here. Um, so I can increase this stroke right here. I'm just gonna do like a, let's do four point stroke, right? Now I need some, so I'm gonna hide this guide since I have my center point already. So if I hold command and uh, colon, it'll it'll take away the uh, guides or you can just go to view guides and hide so now i want to create like the markers that come and separate the rest of the information so i know in my head that the name is going to be a lot longer than the score so i want to give like a 75 25 kind of ratio to the top half right so then i'll draw a line that connects here and that's beautiful so now i like i have enough space for my name there's more than enough space here for uh the the score you can even kind of come a little more do like 80 20 to be more so now you can either keep drawing the lines <clears throat> excuse me for the bottom half or you can just copy and paste this one and then resize it i find it easier for me to just work with just creating new ones because then you got to go in and resize click on anchor points and all that kind of stuff so instead of clicking from up here because then you would add to that stroke i start from the bottom and i'll work my way up and then I'll create one. I hit V again to get out of the pen tool. Then I'll hit P again to get back into the pen tool and I'll create one more section right here. So now I can take these, highlight them and move them across so that we can kind of proportionally figure out like how much space we need, right? So this one is gonna say the whole number, which is not too bad. The longest one will be like 17 as far as width wise. So I think that's more than enough space. This one's gonna come to yardage. Sometimes that can vary. You might have bigger numbers once you start hitting like the five, 600 yards kind of stuff. And then here you'll have the shot numbers, which will tell you what shot you're hitting. So shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four. Some people like putting their graphics in for every shot. I personally only put it in for like either the beginning and when we're putting. So a lot of the times my stuff is already preset. I don't have to change the shot and all that stuff. So now, now comes the fun part, kind of stylizing it to the way you want to stylize it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T. That'll bring the text uh, tool up. I'm going to just click into here. The text is very small, so it's probably really hard to see right now. I'm going to just do first name just because I'm just creating a template. Now you can grab the corners of the text um, box itself and i'm hitting shift and option to stretch proportionally and the cool thing with illustrator now is you see that i size this out it actually changes the text size right here so it tells you you're at 247.608 whatever text size so then when i do that kind of stuff i just try to round it up to like either 250 because that's probably the coolest one so now uh the closest number sorry coolest number <laughs> but anyways so there you see the first name we have a lot of space here right so like if you put my name 
you're going to need this space, right? But if you have a short name, then obviously you're going to have a lot of room to work with. So that's why this this is kind of tough when it comes to templatizing because if you're OCD like me, that whole blank space would bug the shit out of me. So what I usually do is I just keep everything in capitalized. That keeps everything like much larger as far as um, text. And then I'll use a very heavy font. So that way, even if the name was small still, it still covers a lot more surface area than what you had before. Now I'm just gonna Command Z to bring it back. Now this is just a font I'm using just as an example. You can sit here and customize it however you like by just coming up here and choosing all the different fonts that you think would work. Um, it's always kind of a laborious process, but I mean, it helps. So what we're gonna do now is just duplicate this. So instead of having to retype things and then reposition things to match it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit option and shift and that that creates a second duplicate and the shift uh, part of it will hold it in the same uh x-axis so then i don't have anything that's uh, that's i don't have things that are off aligned and what i usually do here is i usually try to pick the largest number that i think is going to be like whatever you shoot i mean but i wish i was shooting plus three most of the time but i think that's a big enough size i think just for maybe sake of it bring this guy back out a little more just so it kind of evens out and then for this, like you can get in here and then make a square and then figure out the center point for that. But for the most part, uh, I try to I just eyeball it and then I'll go in once they actually approve the design. Then I'll go in and meticulously make sure all the margins are the same and stuff like that. But for this sake, we're just going to kind of fly through it. So I'm, hip I'm hitting command sh option again and holding shift to bring it down. And then I'm holding shift again so that it stays within that, that X axis again. And then for this, this is going to be like the first hole, right? So now with this set of text, I definitely do something different. So um, I would use a font that has different weights. Unfortunately, this one does not. <laughs> and, and so I'm going to just change all the font to ones that I know that have different weight styles. This is often about top of my head. I use this font a lot. Montserrat, I don't know how to pronounce it, but there you go, black. Black is pretty a heavy um, like text. And so for this sake, I'll just kind of just leave it as, as it is. There's that. And so now if I come to first, I can take it off this weight that's black and then bring it down to like medium and then maybe jump the text down like 50 points just so that you see some differentiated like hierarchy to like what your scorecard is, right? I would bring this down even more 175 maybe even smaller but you get the point so you can sit here and like finesse it as much as you like so I'm gonna do command shift again command option shift and, and then drag it over and then here I'll put in dummy like text is just like 470 yards if I can spell and then bring this guy back and so do that again option command shift and then bring this guy out. So with this one, I would just do like one and then do a couple spaces, two, couple spaces, three, couple spaces, four, couple spaces, five, right? You got part fives, you might hit part like fives. I would do maybe one more space in between just to fill that gap nicely. And then again, just kind of eyeball where the center is and we'll go in meticulously and do the margins. And so for this sake, I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna come back to the shape tool, create a rectangle that's, going to go underneath the actual like number so this is going to highlight what what shot you're hitting so then in the premiere template the moger template we'll create later you can actually move this position so that you don't have to come back into after effects move it and then re render it you'll be able to just do that with the pro with the premiere template so there you go we got the base of the design kind of down uh the concept of what we're trying to get across in the video is there and i think we're ready to jump into after effects Again, if you have any questions for Illustrator, get in that comment section and I'm happy to answer them. All right, let's jump into After Effects. Okay, now that we're ready to jump into After Effects uh, and with a pretty clean file, you always wanna kinda make sure your stuff is arranged and organized as much as possible. So now in this next step, going into After Effects <clears throat> has definitely gotten a little easier. Um, I use this handy plugin called Overlord that allows me to literally take all these shapes and go straight into After Effects. So let me open up After Effects. I think I got it open up already here. I, okay, there you go. So here's the breakdown of Berdogi stuff. So obviously a lot more intricate, like a lot more different types, types of animation. This was, was more his complex animation. Then I gave him also a secondary one that's a little more simplified. 
uh, less less of an introduction, more just straight to the point. And then he had some other stuff that we created too, just call outs and things like that. So it was fun. So all this stuff he's going to get to edit and kind of just create his own content in uh, while he edits his stuff. So let's create a new template, I mean, a new composition. Actually, I'm going to just close this project out altogether so that way it doesn't get confusing. And what we're going to do is just create a new project. I'm going to hit Command N, create new comp. And we were working in 4K, so we're going to do 3840 by 2160. And let's call this tutorial, what do we call it? Oh, scoreboard, right. <laughs> okay. And we don't need two-minute duration. That's outrageous. I'm working on a long animation, that's why. Uh, 10 seconds, I think, is more than enough time. All right, so we got this laid out. I'm just going to save this file before anything funky happens. Uh, After Effects, let's just save it here. Let's just call this Tutorial Scorecard 2. All right, so now we have everything saved. So now we're ready to kind of bring some elements in. So I'm going to press this button right here, which knocks out the, the mandatory background that the comp gives. So I can see like transparent areas in the composition. So I'm going to go into After Effects. Again, if you don't have Overlord, highly recommend it. Uh, it makes life so much easier um, than bringing in AI files and things like that. So what I'm, I'm literally just going to highlight all the elements here, then click this little up arrow button, and it brings in everything into After Effects for me. Uh, well, it might help if I unlock that last layer. We can bring that one in just individually. And so what we're going to do is throw it in the back. And then there you go. You have all your layers here. Uh, pretty like easy, seamless too. So there you see that transparent kind of knockout background that we have there. First name, last name, everything is all editable, right? So I can go in and call Mulligan. Golfers. Gophers. I mean, we are. We dig a lot of holes. And then let's just leave. <laughs> let's leave everything else the same. So there you go. You have the pretty much the like the the, the entirety of your your um, scorecard there. Now it's just about animating it. So here is where you can kind of like endlessly mess around with it. But for this case, I'm gonna just kind of keep it simple. I'm gonna just have it. I'm gonna actually pre comp the whole thing and then have it like fly up and enlarge at the same time. So you'll see what I'm saying. So again, you can come in here and manipulate things as much as you want. Like if I have that background here, right? Now, let me open up my motion, re-anchor point. Motion 4, also a great plugin I use, super helpful. Um, so they, I just move the anchor point on that background image all the way to the left. So now if I hit S, which opens up scale, and I unlock the uh, create aspect, like proportion, click scale, go 10 frames, go 20 frames. I'm holding shift and command and moving forward with the arrow. That gives me 10 frames movements. So I'm, I'm going 20 frames out and I'm gonna hit command S, option S, excuse me again, to put down another keyframe. I'm gonna hit the home button on my thing, it takes me back home. All this can be done with just uh, using the playhead too. I'm just using keyboard commands because it's much faster for me. And what I'm gonna do, excuse me, is crunch down the X to zero. Right, and so you have. I'm just showing you a simple animation. So I'm highlighting that last keyframe, and putting about like an 80 ease on it. So it has like a, this nice settle at the end of it. Right. Uh -oh. That's why. Okay, so some of the parameters got messed with. So then it wipes on, right? So you could have it do something like that if you wanted to just like completely mask all the elements and just have it all come on at once, right? You could. So like I'll just do that for example, and then I'll just command Z out of it. So what you would do is I would duplicate this guy, keep this out, hide it because we're gonna need it as a mat for when we pre-compose everything. So take all this information, command shift C to pre-compose. And I'm just going to call this flat for now because I'm flattening everything, right? And there's everything in one layer, all pre-composed. So all the information, including that background layer, is there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this background layer that we left in the main composition, and I'm going to mat it to that, right? So now when the animation comes out, it'll reveal all the information just in one simple, smooth move, right? So there's one option that you have, right? So I'm going to Command-Z back out of doing all this fun stuff even after before duplicating that before making those keyframes we're going to come back to everything as just actual artwork 
And so what we're going to do for this one is my concept was is to have everything kind of scale and move up in similar fashion what I'll show you. So what we're going to do again is command A, all the layers, command shift C to pre-compose. I'm going to just call this flat again, right? So now I'm going to continue raster because I want to see the bounding parts of the actual comp, right? So if I click on this little continue raster icon here, it, if I don't have it on, it'll it'll raster the uh, the entire comp now if i do it with it on it'll raster just the elements inside of that comp um so that's what i have here so now if i hit y which is going to help me move the anchor point i'm going to move the anchor point to the um, center uh, for some reason the anchor point move tool doesn't work when your continue raster is on i have no idea why um, if somebody knows the answer to that Give me a comment because i have no idea why so from here we're just going to keep it simple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit option S and option T, which is the shortcuts for opacity and scale. I'm gonna go over 20 frames, maybe 30 frames for, not 20 frames. So shift command, forward key, forward key, that brings me 20 frames. I'm gonna put down two more keyframes again for scale and opacity, S and T. So now what I'm gonna go here, actually I forgot to add position. So we're gonna do a position keyframe here. Then I'm gonna jump towards the end over here and then put another keyframe for position. I'll stop doing all the key commands because I think it's making it confusing for a lot of you. Come back to the front of the playhead and now this is where I'm gonna animate where I want it to how to like enter. So I'm gonna scale this down to maybe 20% smaller. I'm gonna move it down so it moves up as it's scaling up, right? And I'm gonna knock the opacity down all the way. And then with these last keyframes, I'm going to highlight them all and I'm going to put an ease in for about an 80 ease on it. So then it just kind of like jumps up like that, right? And so you can obviously add more to it. I've seen this happen. And then like some people have like a bottom bar that animates underneath it that has more information like dog leg left or I messed up my last shot and we're, we're hitting birdie or bogey or something, right? So there's endless opportunities there too. Like you can do that. So you can have one element come in and then something slide underneath it. I just did that for Birdogi stuff. So he was, he liked that. And so it gives you an area to put some like more fun kind of content in there too or copy. So that's pretty much it. Pretty straight and simple. I'm trying to keep this one pretty simple as far as animation. And like, if obviously you have a question, just reach out to me. Um, and I'm happy to answer any animation questions that you want to do something more intricate with. So with this, we're done with After Effects at this point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the motion graphic template. So the Mogurt file, and then we can move into Premiere. So I'm going to close off this end piece at five five seconds because we don't need the full 10 seconds then I'm going to trim down that comp area and I'm going to hit save right so now what I'm going to do is now that I have the essential graphics panel open right here if you just go to window essential graphics it'll pop up and you can place it wherever you want into your UI right so what I'm going to do here is no composition is selected so what I'm going to do is this drop down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do tutorial scoreboard but if you notice, like I'm gonna rename this so we have a good naming system for the Mogut file, right? Uh, scoreboard, right? So I'll leave that there. If you, I mean, like if you're familiar with After Effects, this is weird because now I'm. How am I gonna get all those attributes inside of this flat composition onto the secondary composition? That's a great thing. It retains all the information in whatever comp you select. So if I double click into here. And then what I do is as I solo supported properties, it's going to open up all the properties you can put into the Mogurt template to control color, size, lighting, anything. You can control all the aspects in Premiere after this. So for us, what we want to do is get all the source text files up into this Mogurt file. And then we also want that position bar. So we want the X and Y, well, mainly the X coordinate for that one, right? But position I don't want to break it break up the x and y dimensions and bring us too confusing so what we're going to do is I'm going to hit u and click into the timeline hit u because that that'll collapse all the layers again so I'm just going to start one by one right I'm going to take this first one mulligan golfers it highlights the layer I'm going to hit u u and that'll open up all the attributes that I need so all the attributes that are underneath it so all like the effects everything that it'll ha it would have underneath it right so I'm going to drag this source text up here and it brings it in so it knows what it's being called already and then you can label it what you want so that in the template it'll show up as your name so I would just leave that as name right 
then you can click on this guy and it gives you the edit properties for Premiere. So you can edit the size of the font, you can edit the type of the font, you can edit the font itself, change it completely. So I turn on all those controls just in case if I ever have names that are too big, I can resize the text and stuff right there in Premiere. And there you go. See, it has all the attributes that you wanna see. You can even do some like Fox style stuff too to it. So if you want all capitals, all lowercase or whatever your, whatever your heart fancies. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do that same concept to the rest of these and I'll jump right back in. Okay, now that I have all everything back in and I have all the text that I want to have editable in my template there, uh, and it's cool. So if you notice, I hit edit properties on the first one, it'll continue that concept for the rest of the, uh, like the copy that you want. And if you obviously you don't want it, you just come back in, hit edit properties and uncheck all of them and you won't have that option there anymore. So now we're coming to the last piece that we want this bar right here. We're going to click on P for position to bring up that attribute and we're going to copy and drag that into here. When you see that blue line underneath it, that's when we know we're adding it in and then we do shot number bar and we're going to call it that and so there you go you have the uh, x and y axis points that you can uh, edit there right so now what we're going to do so we're going to hit save most important thing and then we're going to go right here to export motion graphics template so that's going to bring me up to where i want to save so wherever you desire that you're going to save it to i already have this project going so i'm just going to put everything locally to there i have not created a mogurt file so i'm gonna mogurt make a mogurt folder and i'm gonna save it in there and compatibility i leave everything on just because that's gonna help with fonts and stuff like that click ok and we're ready to go now that's it with after effects let's jump into premiere well the hardest part is done now so now we're gonna move into premiere which i think is the easiest part um so let's move into premiere let's open that up so I already have my essential graphics panel open. If you just like After Effects, if you don't, window essential graphics, and there you have it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually import it and then apply it to your footage. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring some footage down. I think this is footage of us from Harding Park. Uh, just something to use as example so you can lay it over with. So you got the essential graphics panel up. You're gonna hit this little plus sign at the bottom right here. And then you're going to navigate to where you saved your file. Mine is in my Mogurt file folder here. And then I hit open. And there you go. So there's a tutorial scoreboard. So let's just say I put it down here. Media is rendering. And then there you go. There's your file. Right? So obviously you're going to have to play with the size. So if I double click on the Mogurt template. And I jump the scale down to maybe like... 35 40 maybe yeah just this is a great part about being able to play with it so then i'll click on the motion file up there click up there click that there and you can tell right like if i play with the size a little bit it'll fit perfectly in there but it might just be too small to read right so this is where you can play with like what the design should look like and obviously colors that would pop or wouldn't take too much out like away from the footage and stuff like that. So you keep playing with it and play with it how you want because now you see you can overlay the footage and it won't cut off anything, but it's still pretty, you know, visible to being able to read. So now if I click on the tutorial scoreboard, this top graphic right here, I go back to navigating towards my central graphics panel. You'll see that all of my controls are right here. So if I decide to change the name and I'm playing solo and Rode's not playing with me and I just want to call it Bosky, I could just change that and it calls it Bosky, right? And so it'll do that for everything. You can pretty much change out the score. So you could do like plus one, right? And it changes it out. So second. And, and it, you can go down the line with that. And so the good thing about it is when you're in Premiere and you're cut, you've got your cut already done and your giant cuts of everywhere and you know where you're going to place the scorecard, you could just duplicate the scorecard, come over to this one and then re-edit this one and you're ready to go. So that's cool. So like if you have information from a previous hole, you just copy and paste it over then you actually have the information for the next one that you need. So it's like you don't mess up and put the same graphic twice or anything like that. That's at least what I've learned. So a lot of my stuff is templatized this way. So that's pretty much it. Then you have a working template inside of Premiere that you can edit with. Like I understand that this is very complex and, and you know, it takes time to learn this process. So if you want to just avoid all this process and have me design you some stuff, animate some stuff and give you Premiere templates ready to use, uh, Mogur templates, I'm happy to do so. You know, I'm working with other people to try to figure out 
um, stuff that can be used for both Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. But I haven't fully found a solution for that yet. It's still in the works. But um, I'll continue to do these kind of tutorials geared around editing motion graphics and golf if it, you know, fits your needs. I'll have all these project files online in the description so you can download them, mess around with it. Um, and then you can even just kind of use them if you want to. I mean, they're ready to go. So with that, thank you guys again. Like, comment if you like these kind of tutorials. That's the most important. Comment, comment, comment. Then it gives me ideas on what I can make tutorials for. So Smith Family Videos, 3234, I think that was the name. Thank you for the comment. Here's this video. So hopefully that helps you. And uh, Berdogi, thank you for letting me be of service to you and letting me do your branding. That was fun. Got, a lot, got to do a lot of animations. But with that, follow us on our socials. I got a lot of stuff coming out on our socials as well as on YouTube. We will be continuing the grind. So hopefully this year we can kind of start getting some brand deals and stuff. Who knows? Let's see where, the, where it takes us. With that, questions again, comment. Like, subscribe. Peace out, people.